Hello. Today I'm going to be telling the story about how I tried to beat Homeworld 3 with only one ship. One, two, three, four, and more ships, all destroyed in the attempts, all culminating in one exciting victory against evil aliens. This video has been sponsored by Gearbox, who challenged me to find some excruciatingly painful way of enjoying Homeworld 3. Click the link below now, or else. I'm going to be playing a demo build of Homeworld 3 with one of the game modes. Normally, this mode is designed for four players, each mustering a whole fleet of ships. Instead, I'm playing alone. And I'm not playing with a fleet of ships, but only one ship. The carrier, a large vessel with a multitude of cannons, which is great for knocking out enemy ships. Only drawback is that because of its size, it's also very good at getting shot at by enemies. So I embarked upon the first mission. Attempt one. I sent away my whole fleet of ships, except the carrier, and I proceeded to my first objective. I shot the first few enemy vessels, and I got shot at by them, sustaining minimal damage. Unfortunately, I then sustained a lot more damage. It's very hard to evade the enemy when your sole vessel is large and slow-moving like a whale, up against a fleet of enemy fighters. My carrier blew up and horribly failed before I was able to complete the second objective of moving my large whale-like vessel into a different position. Undebated, I looked to the second attempt with optimism. I had learned that you should not position your ship in harm's way. Again, I dismissed the rest of my fleet far away, then I sent in my carrier to secure the first resources, and then I took position to avoid the enemies at the incursion points so I wouldn't get shot. This time, my objective was to prevent an enemy transport from exiting the region. I confronted them head on. Unfortunately, my ship was again almost immediately destroyed. It blew up. Attempt number three. I now had the lessons of not one, but two colossal failures behind me. One. You shouldn't put your ship in harm's way or you'll get shot. And two, nor should you attempt to accomplish the mission objectives at all. They're simply too difficult for only one vessel to complete. For this third attempt, I was given the task of escorting three civilian vessels to the extraction point on the other side of the map. Having learned not to attempt the mission objectives at all, I just stayed behind and watched them as they were horribly blown up by the enemy fleet. Success. I had survived and remained, above all, alive to make my way into hyperspace for the second mission. At this juncture, it may be helpful to disclose that there is a total of three missions in this game mode. As long as you survive, you make your way to the next mission. After all, my goal was just to remain alive. Unfortunately, in the second area, I was almost immediately overwhelmed by the sheer number of enemy ships, and I blew up again for the third time. After three failed, but admittedly improving attempts, I decided that enough was enough. Three ships had already blown up, and it was time to alter my strategy and parameters, or it would be impossible to survive. My carrier was capable of producing smaller ships, so logically, I could still be abiding by the parameters of starting with one ship for this challenge if I produced smaller ships out of the bigger ship to repair the main ship. It's not cheating, it's logic. So I embarked upon my fourth attempt to beat the game, starting with one ship. I pooped out two smaller support frigates from my carrier. One to repair my carrier, and one to repair the support frigate that was repairing the carrier, in case the enemy began to lay fire upon the support frigate itself. Or if they started to lay fire on that back support frigate, I could just order the first one to repair it so then they would be repairing each other. Theoretically. Three ships for unlimited healing and damage, forever. This was foolproof and logical. So I began by setting out just as I had before back on the first mission, securing the resources and taking out the first objective. But this time, when I got shot at, my support frigates healed my carrier. Unfortunately, logic is not completely reliable. For the next objective, I secured the area from the enemy ships, but they were quite simply too powerful for me. I hadn't accounted for the possibility that they might attack all of my ships at once. First they blow up one support frigate, and then the other support frigate, and at last, my carrier. Everyone blew up, we died, and the challenge was over again. What went wrong? To recap, I think this was my major mistake. As I attempted to repair our fleet, they kept shooting at us, and I hadn't accounted for the possibility that the enemy might kill us faster than we could heal ourselves. However, I maintain that my fourth failure was not in vain, since I learned that support frigates make excellent cannon fodder, at least for a while. 
What if we had even more frigates to all heal each other in a big loop as a distraction while my carrier picked off the enemies one by one? So I embarked once again on attempt number five. And this time, I pooped out not only two support frigates, but also two resource collector ships for my carrier, which could then gather resources and then allow me to poop out six more support frigates, making for a ton of healing, and more importantly, a major distraction to the enemy fleet while I picked them off one by one. This time it actually worked, although he completely ignored all of the mission objectives and allowed the enemy transport ships just to escape. This time, we survived long enough to keep repairing each other and gather enough resources to produce a multitude of support frigates, which amounted to little more than cannon fodder, but effectively distracted the enemy from killing me. So I initiated hyperspace and embarked with six support frigates and two resource controllers on the second mission once again. Unfortunately, we were again too weak. Everyone died again, and we failed to secure the area from hostiles. The moral victory, however, this time was that it took a really long time to kill us. Attempt six, you know the drill. Same deal this time, resource controllers, support frigates, cannon fodder. But this time, we did a better job keeping more of our ships alive and uh, ignoring the objectives. We failed again, but our survival meant that at last we had accomplished my true objective to pass beyond at last to the third mission. Now I had it all, eight support frigates, three resource controllers, all there just to be cannon fodder and support my one military ship, the carrier. Unfortunately, we were then brutally massacred by a ship called an Incarnate Destroyer, which is a fearsome enemy vessel which shoots a death laser and just poops on you and your fleet. Now nothing had worked. At this time, I humbly admit that I am a failure. I had failed. I couldn't beat the game with one ship, or even slightly cheating by producing a whole fleet of non-military ships to slowly pick apart the enemy. Still, at this time I'll say, this is a four-player mode, and I felt like it would be cool to use all the lessons I learned from try-harding such a limited playthrough to construct an actual legitimate fleet and play the game it was intended, albeit still with the limitation of playing a four-player mode all on my own. So if you're willing to see what Homeworld 3 actually has to offer, Attempt number seven. Honestly, it still counts because I'm starting with only one ship. But that ship just poops out all of the other ships. Strike craft, recon and interceptor ships, more resource controllers, and this time assault frigates. All to add up to enough firepower to support my primary carrier vessel and move in a spherical formation around it. This time we actually managed to eliminate all the enemy ships at the first objective rather than just hiding from them and procrastinating. And we built a massive fleet of upgraded assault frigates and interceptors by the time I reached the second mission. What I want you to take away from this is that this game is utterly cool when you play it in the intended way. The ships use actual physics to determine the damage and evasion. There's no die roll or randomization. In the second mission, we were downloaded into the next area with a massive fleet, a feeling which can only be described as futuristic. Noom! Noom! The combined firepower of having an actual fleet rather than spamming healer ships is impressive. And this time, on account of all my failures, I was actually overprepared for the objectives and I was able to capture and rescue three civilian crafts. All while bolstering and upgrading my fleet to boast an impressive 35 interceptors, all swarming and overwhelming the enemy in sharp attack patterns, at the same time defending and securing enough resources to make a strong showing for at last the third and final mission, which was heretofore impossible, I might add, and we had utterly face-planted at before. But this time I had an, an actual fleet. There's something utterly awesome about descending an army of space vessels all armed to the teeth downward on your enemies, spelling doom on anyone brave enough to get in their way. By now I had created a whole maneuverable army out of only one starting carrier, large ships and small. And I captured the first, the second, and the third objectives, all with a massive army of interceptors that descended upon their prey like a plague of locusts. But real-time strategy games do release a lot of serotonin for me. And there's something utterly satisfying about starting out from a single ship and building up an army step by step, all to outfit and defend that core engine that gives life to your fleet. All these plans and tactics executed one by one, each giving you a little edge and snowballing into one utterly overwhelming fleet until all your units are just one giant blob of death hurtling at the enemy, and you can just throw caution to the wind and charge at them. I accomplished my last objective to destroy an enemy battlecruiser with the culmination of all my efforts paying off. 
all those baby steps resulting in something utterly satisfying and explosive. Anyway, like I said, RTS games used to be a lot more popular when I was a kid, and they were my first foray into PC gaming, so a big thanks once again to Gearbox for sponsoring this preview of Homeworld 3, which will be officially releasing in February 2024. You guys can use my link below if you want to check it out. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. A big thanks to my patrons, who are able to heal each other with beams of very powerful light. Until next time.